cut that shit out, Earl, man. He's not supposed to be back there at all. Oh, look. <coughs> Well, welcome back again, folks. Man, we're going to have to do something about that Earl, dude. He's just, uh, when the camera, he sees that camera light come on, he's, uh, becomes very active. <laughs> so, welcome back. i am uh, got all the frets in. I've just uh, been going along with the sides here, smoothing that sharp edges down. And I'm using a uh, fret beveling file, uh, or I don't know what all, fret angle file, whatever you want to call it. But it's got uh, two files in it. I don't know if you can see this or not. This file is a 90 degree file. Okay, you lay this part down on the neck. You file the frets flat at 90 degrees. And then you flop it over if you want to. I think that's a 35 degree angle right here. That's what I'm doing to this guitar. Here comes trouble. Hear the bells. When you hear those bells, you know what's about to happen or could happen. Anyways, 35 degrees and I'll uh, bring you over here and show you just a minute. All I'm doing is just, and I'm not sanding the shit out of it. I'm just gently going all the way from one end of the fretboard to the other with this. I've already preset the pile of depths. I'll explain that in a few minutes. This is not something that you just uh, lay the file on there and grind or sand away. You don't want to do that. Like I say, just long, smooth, continuous motions all the way up to both ends of the fretboard. And I'll bring you over here and bring you a little bit closer and I'll show you what kind of, of uh, tracks this file leaves. Yes, yeah, so they know you're here. Uh, hold on. <laughs> I've only did this one side of the fretboard nearest us so far. I should have swept that off of there. But what you can see what that does is kind of lays the uh, sharp edges down and puts a 35 degree angle on the ends of your frets. Now when I flatten these, level them and polish them and crown them and all that, might have to take a, uh, a beveling file and go over each end and roll off of the fret as I go off of it on both sides of the fret. Maybe you have to do that, maybe not. This side over here I haven't touched at all yet and they are very sharp. So let me get set up here and uh, there you can see how it's taking them down. You get set up here and sweep that up and we'll do the other side. I've got to hit this side a little bit more first too. So like I say, I'm using this 35 angle uh, file right here, this one. And you want to set your depth on this. You want to be very careful, especially on the guitars that come really close to the body up here like this. When you come up here, you don't want that file digging into the top or the finish. So, right there, I've already set it for the other side. It's okay for this side too. Just loosen these screws and move the uh, file uh, up or down inside the block here to adjust your depth. Now this is very rough. Uh, this is when you first start off doing this, it is extremely rough, as you're going to hear. Well, there's a couple up here that are really sticking out. This is the hardest part when you first start. That's why it's important to clip your frets off as close to the, uh, you know, as close to flat as you possibly can. And there's uh, three or four up here that's, well, two, that's uh, sticking out pretty good right there. a lot of time, a lot of patience, a lot of concentration. You got to just watch what you're doing and be careful. Eventually it will get to where the file will slide right over those frets and you'll start to see where you're making progress. Let's say it takes a little while. It's not 
something you're going to do in a few minutes. There's a fret right here. That one right there is sticking out pretty good. made some progress here it's starting to starting to see the effects of it a little bit now but I uh, just want to give you an idea of what's going on there how this works and how I'm doing it I'll bring you back when I've got a little bit more progress under my belt if Earl will just leave me alone long enough to get anything come on man but you can hear how much easier the file is going over the frets now from the beginning it's much easier it's important you keep that thing flat down on the fretboard too, as flat as possible. Just let the pile do the work. I always spend a little bit more time on each end of the fretboard because they don't touch the file as much as the center ones do. When you come up here and you come off of the fretboard like that, you know, the, the rest of these frets are getting the entire length of the file. The frets on the ends do not get that much. So I always spend a little bit more time on each end. You can hear that. file because you can really chew up some stuff in a hurry with it so let me suck all this dust over here and clean some of this up and I'll bring you back and we'll see where we go from here now here's an interesting concept I've been kicking around for a while it works I just haven't uh, dialed out all the details in yet this is the carpenters level uh, if you set that level with the plane of the bridge okay Make sure it's exactly level with the plane of the bridge. Shine it right up the center of the fretboard. I don't know how well the camera is going to pick this up. I'll turn a couple of lights off so maybe you can see it better. But uh, you can tell if a fret is really high, the red light stops on that fret. Now I can tell by the colors of how bright the, the light is. Or how dim it is compared to others like this third fret right here it's brighter than it is on the fourth and the second so I'm betting that third fret that a rocker right here I'm betting that third fret right here is high sure enough it is now it's only high in the middle and the bottom up toward the base each string it's not but you can tell by the, uh, like I say, a, a high fret, the light is brighter on that fret. Or it will stop there if the fret's high enough. If this fret was high enough, there wouldn't be any more light from that fret on. Sometimes if you have a low fret, you know the light will shine right over it. And it, it doesn't even hit the fret at all, but it will hit the one before it and the one after it. It's just something I've been kicking around playing with on frets. And it seems to work pretty well. I gotta. I want to dye that fretboard again once I level the frets and dress them and crown them and all that. Cause I've. You can just touch it with a file, man, and it, it, the dye right here is a tiny little place. I don't, know, uh, I don't think the camera's me. Yeah, maybe you can see it right there. Just you know, little nicks and places like that. I'm gonna touch those up. Well, after I uh, do all the fret stuff, I'll go over them again and make them look better. So let's get ready and do it to it. I saw her ass. She passed the window. Yes, I saw her, but she didn't see me.
you color all of the frets blue. That's got to be blue. Any other color won't work. None of those other colors work. <laughs> nah, any color you want. I can see blue really well. And I, I just like blue. All this does is just uh, show me when I go filing on that fretboard. Yeah, I can see what's being removed and what's being left behind. I like to support the middle of the neck near the center of it. Uh, not put not up here like that because then you might shove down in the neck and create relief into it while you're filing. Then it wouldn't be flat then, would it? So I prefer to use uh, I don't I've got sanding beams loaned out now. I got a lot of shit loaned out now that I think about it. But I've been using these a lot on frets. I really like them. I dig them, man. They're just a, uh, a sharpening stone, basically, is all it is. But it's a diamond grit. i got three of these. Uh, that's a medium. I have a fine and a coarse. And, uh, yeah, we're in the camera, I think. Yeah, I can back off here a little bit. Maybe that's better. <clears throat> and I'll just uh, start back here. You know, you're not going to go at it like a, you know, like a, with these files, you don't have to. Just start back here. Try to cover the entire fretboard all the way up and all the way back. You don't have to press down on this very hard. Now, you can see here the center of these three frets still have blue in the center of them, okay? Uh, these frets, this one, that's got a little bit in the center, a little bit on each side, both sides here. Now these, that one's touching all the fret except right there. Uh, that, the coloring frets like that, I, you know, when I get down a little bit, I'll color them again and do it again. But I want to make mention before I forget it again, I forgot to mention this in the other videos. Whoever cut those slots out in that fret needs to be, uh, <laughs> something to wake them up that that's the shittiest slot job I ever saw some of the fret slots were deeper than others some were cut sideways like this side maybe would be deeper than this side was or or the base side would be deeper than the treble side I don't know how they managed that but they were really uneven like uh, you know it wasn't cut level each one of them the same uh, that made it a little, you know, funky driving some of the frets in. I got them all in okay. They seated up good and everything. But I uh, just wanted to mention that because I kept forgetting to in those other videos. Now they're exactly in the right places, you know, as far as uh, location goes. Just the slots, man. Some of them were deep. Some of them were not so deep. Uh, some of them were offset to one side or the other. So anyway, I'm going to do this a while. If I use this Stumac uh, file glued to a piece of wood, I'd be here another hour getting this far. 30 minutes at least, getting as far as I have right now. Anyways, I'm going to go a little more with this, and then I'll switch to, uh, I've got a fine here. Same thing, only it's a finer less coarse file and of course I'll collar them again get them all flat and I'll bring you back and we will uh, do something else I don't know what it'll be but it probably will be good <laughs> here you can see from the dust that uh, coming off pretty good on the sides lacking a little bit there's less dust in the center here that's cause the uh, the uh, files not hitting in the center of those frets right in this area so much so I'm going to uh, sweep all this off now color it up again with blue and continue and see what exactly where the files touching so let's do it take the old trusty crowning vial and uh, this is a very expensive file those of you who deal with those stew jack blood sucking folks <laughs> know how much these cost and what it is, it's a crowning file. It's 150 grit on this end. Let me in the camera, yeah. Pop it out, turn it around. 
this 300 grit on this end. So I'm going to start with 150. Start up here, and I'm going to crown each file with that each fret with that 150 all the way down. First, what I'll do is color the frets blue again. Okay, and we got a blue line there. I'll start filing, and I'll file until there is a slight sliver of blue line left on top of that fret on each fret. This way, I know I've maintained my flatness. And same thing when I go to 300 grit, you know, watch that color them again and file down till. Only a little sliver of blue marker is left on each fret, and that way we know that we have maintained the flatness that we just worked so hard to get. I leave, you know, a tiny flat spot on the top of my crowns. I've did it for years. More fret comes in contact with the string, the fret don't wear out as fast. If it's peaked up sharp or rounded up sharp, the string barely touches the fret, it's going to wear faster. So I always leave a tiny flat surface across the tops of the, the crowns. And uh, I've always got along really well doing that. You'll see. Hold on. Well, folks, there you have it. Earl, man, cut it out, dude. You said, oh, come on. Every time the candle starts to run, you start that. And you always say you won't do it. Anyways, <laughs> welcome back again. I'm not going to bore you to death with me crowning every fret. I've got a lot of videos already up of that. If you want to go back and watch those, you know, I'll show you a little bit on the next video. Maybe, maybe not, I don't know. Uh, that third fret, the third fret, if you remember, it, it rocked. It was high. shouldn't rock anymore. And it does not. Anywhere across the fret, it's flat. We have flatness all the way down. Uh, like I said, I'm going to go ahead and crown them all. I might video that. If not, I have a lot of videos already. Just search my channel for fret crowning. And you probably will come up. There's a lot of them. Um, we're getting close to the end, guys, on this thing. It's not going to be very long. We're going to be stringing this puppy up. Go over them, crown each one. Then go to 300 grit. Crown them again. Then we got to go through all the steps of sandpaper. I'll probably start with about an 800 grit, go to 1,000, 1,215, 2,000, and I'll use uh, this uh, semi-chrome polish on them. Before I do that, though, I think I'm going to stain the neck one more time because I've got it kind of roughed up in a few places where the files uh, somehow made contact. I don't know how that happened. I mean, I. I guess I should admit I screwed up and maybe touched it a little bit. Nothing bad or serious, just uh, <clears throat> I can touch it back up and you won't even know it. The owner decided he wants uh, fret markers, side dots, you know what I'm talking about. So stay tuned for that, I'll show you how I do it. I'm going to put side dots in it and something else, oh a strap button, he wants a strap button on uh, the heel right here. I've got videos up of that too, but I may, may or may not show you. I don't know, baby. If you want to see it, say so. I'll, I'll film it. If I haven't already got it filmed by the time you say so, or done, not filmed. Woo! 97 degrees here today, folks. It was 97 freaking degrees here today. Of course, I'm not sweating so bad. We got the air running, pumping full blast, and it's, I think it's, uh, well, it's, 74 degrees in here, 67 humidity, 67 percent. Anyways, cheers to you. I'm rambling again. Thank you guys for watching and gals. Thanks for all of your support. Thanks to new and old subscribers. Uh, hang around, man. You're going to like it here, I do believe. Uh, but yeah, that, that's a few things to come. The side uh, dots, fret markers, uh, crown, sandpaper, all the steps of sandpaper, semi-chrome polish, dye the fretboard a little bit more, and then I guess we'll be ready to string this puppy up. I can't think of anything else. Then we got to set it all up, uh, do a setup on it, complete setup. I was looking here, just laying a straight edge on the <clears throat> on the neck, and the neck's straight, perfectly straight right now. Slide that puppy right back over the bridge, check that out, right on back, man. It does not even touch that bridge. It's very close, just like uh, the original with the original fretboard, but it's not touching it. That's perfect. So I will see you. Hopefully I'll see you come back here again. 
and uh, this thing's going to live. It's going to be singing real soon. Stick around and listen to it. Cheers to you. See you on the next one. Earl, I told you, man.